Aircraft carriers are known as oceanic giants that have dominated the maritime world with their grandeur. Behind their magnificence and power lies a heart that propels all of their operations, the nuclear reactor. It's not just any nuclear reactor, but the technology that enables aircraft carriers to sail endlessly for days without needing to refuel. However, aircraft carriers weren't the first mode of transportation powered by nuclear reactors. In 1954, the United States Navy launched its first nuclear-powered submarine named USS Nautilus. The submarine, capable of speeds of 20 to 25 knots, was also the first nuclear-powered submarine. Thanks to its nuclear propulsion, USS Nautilus successfully navigated the North Pole back in 1958, and within less than a decade, the United States Navy had 26 active nuclear-powered submarines and 30 others under construction. But long before the invention of nuclear-powered submarines, early-generation submarines were powered by diesel engines and required trips to ports for refueling. Hence, by applying nuclear power to submarines, it became likely that submarines could operate for around 20 years without refueling. Since then, nuclear reactor technology has been developed to power aircraft carriers. Not only the United States, but Russia also became another formidable nation to adopt this nuclear reactor technology. The peak occurred at the end of the Cold War when there were 400 operational and under-construction nuclear-powered submarines. Other countries such as Britain, France, China, and India also developed various advanced nuclear-powered submarines. This development led to today's submarines and aircraft carriers of the Navy being entirely nuclear-powered. Apart from military purposes, nuclear reactors are sometimes used for civilian purposes as well. For instance, icebreakers operating in the Russian Arctic region utilize nuclear power. Nuclear energy is the only energy source with sufficient power to break thick ice with minimal fuel. This technology has also helped extend Arctic navigation from 2 to 10 months per year, even throughout the year, specifically in the Western Arctic. So, how do these nuclear reactors power submarines and aircraft carriers today? Fundamentally, the operation of nuclear reactors on Navy vessels is similar to land-based nuclear power plants. To provide power to aircraft carriers and submarines, atoms inside the nuclear reactor split releasing energy in the form of heat. This generated heat is used to produce high-pressure steam. Subsequently, the steam drives turbines that provide power to rotate propellers. Additionally, turbines also generate electricity for the ship. When the steam cools and condenses back into water, the water is then circulated back through the system and the process restarts. To protect ship crew from radiation hazards emitted by the reactor, the nuclear reactor compartment must be shielded. Crew members are prohibited from direct access during reactor operation. Nuclear reactor specialists routinely conduct radiation checks using monitoring devices. Before performing their duties, they strictly adhere to safety procedures, work in shifts, and carefully plan tasks to limit radiation exposure. Within these nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, there are three key teams responsible for operating the nuclear reactor. 
nuclear officers, electronics technician nuclear, and machinists mate nuclear. A number of crew members assigned to the nuclear office team are responsible for monitoring the performance of the nuclear reactor on the ship. They are tasked with continuously monitoring and ensuring the ship moves as intended and has enough power to do so. In one aircraft carrier, such as the USS Theodore Roosevelt, there are at least 35 crew members in the nuclear officer department who oversee various technicians on board, especially electrical technicians. The officers in the nuclear officer department also ensure that both nuclear reactors providing steam to the four main engines flow smoothly through the large turbines installed inside the ship. Thus, electricity can flow to all parts of the ship, including for the process of distilling seawater into fresh water. In addition to the crew in the nuclear officer department, the crew working as electronics technician nuclear also play a crucial role as suppliers of nuclear energy to the aircraft carrier. They focus on being part of the supervisory team that supports the safe operation of the nuclear reactor aboard the aircraft carrier. Furthermore, they are responsible for starting and shutting down the nuclear reactor when needed, as well as maintaining equipment related to reactor safety. Some of the things these technicians monitor through control devices include pressure, temperature, and flow through the primary system. Besides maintaining various equipment, these electrical technicians also ensure the proper functioning of numerous electrical circuits. Another team that assists in operating these nuclear-powered aircraft carriers is the Machinists Mate Nuclear or MMN Department. Before performing their duties, crew members in the MMN Department are trained to operate the propulsion power generator in submarines and aircraft carriers. Piping systems in aircraft carriers are one of the main aspects they frequently observe and work on. This is to separate high-pressure systems containing different fluids such as water, oil, and other fuels, or simply high-pressure air. They also ensure there are no other sediments in the pipes that may disrupt the performance of the nuclear reactor in the aircraft carrier. So what happens to the nuclear reactor of aircraft carriers that are no longer in use? If there is a nuclear reactor that is no longer functioning properly or according to procedures, its compartment will be sent to the final disposal site using a barge. During the shipment process, Coast Guards and Navy personnel will provide escort ships to ensure the barge's security. This is not just a process of disposing of nuclear compartments. The Navy must comply with regulations issued by the Department of Transportation, one of which is that the radiation level from the nuclear reactor must not exceed the specified limit. These limits are applied to protect workers, the public, and the environment. Afterward, the Department of Energy will dispose of certain types of contaminated reactor parts from the aircraft carrier. If any parts are contaminated, they will be stored in cells specifically designed for waste storage. Unlike fossil fuels that always cause waste, nuclear energy is considered more economical and does not produce emitted gases. Therefore, nuclear-powered aircraft carriers are considered environmentally friendly compared to diesel-fueled ships. 
Moreover, with the reduction of fossil fuels, it is highly likely that nuclear reactor technology could easily enter into everyday human life. This is also estimated to pave the way for beneficial competition for ships against airplanes in the international market. And in supporting the advancement of this technology, there are already many laboratories in the United States focused on developing nuclear technology for the Navy. For example, the Betis Atomic Power Laboratory and Knowles. However, on the other hand, there are other problems arising from this nuclear reactor technology. One of them is the high cost required to develop nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, especially in times of peace. Additionally, other issues arising from nuclear reactor technology include pressure on mechanical systems, saltwater corrosion, and the difficulty of operation and conditions with lots of shocks and vibrations, thus causing a massive explosion of nuclear radiation that could easily contaminate the environment.